Alright, so before I talk about what this video is about, I wanted to say that I have the first frame paused here so that I can uh, talk about the technique a little bit because it happens within the first 10 seconds of the video. Um, and I, I wanted to make this video to show a technique that I used a lot but that new cloaky hunters oftentimes don't realize that they can do. And uh, basically, it, in EVE, if you're within 100 kilometers of something that's on grid with you, you can hold ALT and click on it, and the camera will actually adjust so that you have a close-up view of the thing that you've clicked on. Um, but if you're over 100 kilometers away, you can no longer do this. So, in this case, I, I found some miners in a Nor Anomaly in the wormhole, and uh, they're 140 kilometers away. So for me, the slow boat to where they are, it would actually take me, I think, a couple minutes or something. I haven't done the math on it, but it would take quite a while. And um, the only other option really is to slow boat away from the miners until I'm 150 kilometers away and then warp to something near them, but then I risk being decloaked. Um, so the basic idea here is that I want to be able to see what these miners are mining and I want to bookmark the asteroids that they're mining so that I can warp to that asteroid and actually, you know, start shooting at them. Um, and in this particular instance, I'd be able to use my overview to help me out. Like, I could just have a tab with asteroids on it, but a lot of times that's not an option, especially if, like, um, there, if instead I was in, like, a combat anomaly, um, I wouldn't be able to actually warp close to the, the ships in the combat anomaly without risking quite a bit, you know, with missiles flying around and rats flying everywhere and drones and everything. It's just way too risky. Um, so the basic technique, and I'm going to unpause in just a second here, but the basic technique is pretty simple. All you do is you swing your camera around so that instead of looking at the miners like they are right, like I am right now, you're actually looking away from them and then you zoom out until your camera is positioned about where they are. Alright, so I'm going to unpause the video and you can see this happen here at the beginning. So, I, you know, I see the miners, I swing the camera around so it's facing the other way, and then I zoom out. Uh, and the camera is really sensitive and kind of tricky when you do this, but as you can see, I can get a fairly close-up look uh, at the mining ships themselves, and I can actually bookmark the asteroids that they're, they're mining. And like I said, if this were a different situation and these ships were doing some sort of PVE or something, I could see, you know, maybe the guns on the ships or whether they were remote repping or, or different things like that. And uh, then the rest of this video, we'll just, I'll just talk about this engagement just to make it a little bit more interesting. The technique itself is something that, you know, once you see it and you know how to do it, it just seems like everyone would know how to do it, but, you know, trust me, people don't. Uh, so anyways, I bookmarked the asteroids here, and now I'm just working away to the closest celestial, and then I'll come back and I'll start shooting. And uh, on grid, we had a retriever and a procurer. The retrievers usually go down pretty quickly, and um, I mean, you know, it, it's probably worth fighting them even if they have combat drones. Um, but in this case, they I only saw mining drones out, and the procurer had, I believe, the mining drones. And usually a procurer can easily just kill a bomber. Like, it's not even really, a single bomber is not really a threat to a procurer who has combat drones and is paying attention. Uh, but in this case, he has mining drones, so I'm not too worried. I, I realize that I have, you know, at least a window here um, when he's got the mining drones out, so I can actually probably pick off the retriever. And then, you know, I, I was mostly just planning to run away from the procure. So uh, I land, and I lock up the retriever and shoot it, and I also lock up the procure. And I'm going to shoot at it for a while. Actually, um,. You'll see in a minute here, I actually fly pretty close to the procure, which this is not, that's not something I'd recommend doing. Um, but I guess just that with him having mining drones out, I wasn't worried. But in hindsight, he could have easily just, you know, scram web me and then switch drones, and that would have been it for me. So the retriever goes down uh, really quickly. Uh, you know, a tank retriever will take a little bit longer than this, but this guy went down very quickly. And then I start shooting at the here, and I just figure I'll have to work, but like I said, if he had a, a web and a point, and uh, combat drones, I, I would probably have been pretty dead here, so, um, I mean, uh, in this case, he actually, you know, he just leaves his drones out, and in a minute here, he'll lock me, 
and he actually has ECM that he sets on me. So I kind of, I guess, lucked out that if you're mining in a procure in hostile space like this, I mean, it is almost worth fitting tackle, you know. It takes things a while to kill you, so this guy could have tackled me and killed him himself, or maybe his retriever friend could have switched into basically any frigate that's not a stealth bomber and then come in and killed me, so... Something to keep in mind if, I guess, you're on the mining end of this sort of thing. And it takes a while, you know, for me to grind through this Procurus tank. I mean, they really are, are very tanky. And it, I mean, like, it's interesting because the Procurus has, you know, of course, the large tank, like, that's its first line of defense. But then its second line is kind of like the fact that it generates such a small kill amount. I mean, it's almost not even worth it for me to be sitting here killing it, because if I do manage to kill it, the mill is like, you know, 10, 15 million S. So I risk quite a bit by trying to kill this thing. You know, I mean, uh, comparatively speaking, I know a bomber for a lot of people is just, is nothing, you know. I mean, there aren't a lot of ships that ammo cost more than the whole bomber, but I mean, just comparatively, I'm, I'm going for like a 10, 15 million a skill in my ship, that's like 30 or 40 million a so. Anyways, it looks like I'm getting close. I'm actually pretty surprised about this. Um, but he ends up getting the jam off here in just a moment. And, yeah, so he, he jams me now, which is unfortunate. He was in armor, so most of his tank was gone, and I, I was very close to killing him. I tried to relock him, but I... Like, I figure it's hopeless at this point, because the jams last so long, but I actually, I actually lose jam, and he warps uh, shortly after that, so it was, it was actually kind of close, you know. And uh, also, during this fight, I guess, you know, if you go back, you can see that I tightened up my scan after the retriever left to catch only what would potentially be in warp to me. Um, and then after this, I decide, they, they switch into different ships, and I decided, you know, to see what they're going to do, and it looks like they're going to come back and try and kill me. I think the Thorax had warp pins in the site, and here I go back to the boss and see that they're... It looks like they're shipping up to come kill me, and I don't really like their ship choices. I mean, to kill a bomber, you really want frigates or something, so unless they were trying to bait me out with ships that I wouldn't be scared of or something, unless that was their plan, I don't, I don't think that these are good choices to try and bait out and kill a bomber, really. Uh, you know, but that's what they decided to go with. So, I have a, a little fleet formed up, and they're on their way. Um, I think they have like 10 jumps or something. But I don't want to just sit around and wait. Like, if I don't do anything, these guys might think that I've just left or something, or gone AFK. So I warp back to the site with them, and I warp at range. You know, I warp to uh, where I had originally shot the retriever, except I warp at 50, which is kind of towards the edge of my torpedo range. And um, I figure I'll just launch torps at them from distance, and since they're in such slow ships that I can probably just maintain range, and uh, if they ever end up getting too close somehow, like, I don't maybe the Rudix has an MJD or something, I can just be aligned out and warp off. Uh, but these guys don't really move. I mean, while I'm shooting torps at them, for the most part, they just, I don't even think they turn on their prop mod, and then I think they're all afterburn at that, so I was really no, in no real risk here, and I probably could have gone closer and, you know, let them think that they were getting me by taking, you know, drone aggro or maybe uh, getting nicked by the lasers a little bit or something, uh, but instead I just stay at a completely safe distance, and it may have been a little bit of a mistake to just be this, like, uncatchable for them, because what they'll end up doing is actually going back and reshipping into frigates, which is, is you know, a much better choice for doing what they're trying to do, but also... I mean, it would have been nice if, when my fleet showed up, we had a Stratios to shoot at instead of just a bunch of frigates, you know. Um, but, the, you know, the Brutus warps, and then the Thorax and Stratios stay around for a little bit longer before they realize that there's, you know, nothing, nothing is going to come of this, and uh, eventually they'll warp off. And then the the next section, um, I kind of messed up my recording on this whole, whole um series of clips, I don't know what, what happened, but uh, the next time, like the next clip is just the fleet actually in the site and the fight happening, so we don't really get to see them reshipping into the frigates and everything, but the this sort of baiting thing actually I think ends up working out. 
I mean, who knows how it would have gone if I hadn't sat around and shot at these guys, but I don't think that they would have just hung out in the site for ten minutes until everyone showed up, you know. Uh, so they all work out, and I, I go ahead and work back to the boss. And, uh, you know, if, if not everyone is going to have a fleet that's going to rush to come in and help you out, but if you're, you know, like I usually have, or I used to at least have an Orca and system to switch out, you know, and so you can a lot of times get them to ship into different uh, ships based on sort of your activities, like here they will downship, which is not really what I wanted, but I just needed to keep their interest. Uh, but uh, otherwise, if you're, like, close to home, if you're close to where you live, you can just hop out and switch into something else if they change ships. And so here we are, you know, I've, they've gone back to the site, the guys have gone back to the site, and I have, um, my fleet members showing up here. And, uh, we, we go ahead and just get the Brutix because it's the most expensive thing. And this is, I mean, even though these guys have come out to actually fight, this is still basically a gank, you know. I mean, it's 3v3 and we're both in combat ships, so we've got a Loki and a Northrest and a Bomber versus a couple of Tech 1 ships, so this is, uh, I mean, it's, you know, it's still pretty much a game, so we just come in and we pop the Brutix and then the one frigate that's still hanging out, the Orthrus, can point because it has really long point range and it's just kind of an absurdly good ship, I guess. Uh, but that's it, and again, like, I guess, I guess this video has been mostly about baiting, but really the technique at the beginning where you move your camera to look at, um, things that are over 100 kilometers away is, I think, really a, a vital part of this spooky hunting thing that uh, I do so much. I think that's a really important thing to be able to do and it really helps out a lot.